What is a beautiful people James here from Bite Me Too. So you got a shiny new card, but you want more? You want more from that card? You want more frame rates? You want more speed? You want to make your card burn faster? Well, we can do so many things with that. You can make your games go from like this to this. We can do a lot more things. We can even burn our car to death. We can have a huge explosion in our house while we are overclocking the GPU. Nah, I'm messing with you. So, let's begin. Before we dive in this, we need to know our hardware first. That's the foremost step. All GPUs are not created equal, just like CPUs when you're overclocking them. Every silicone is different, and I don't mean that silicone, you dirty pig. Every card has a different potential to overclock. Some go really high, some cannot, but that's all right. GPUs are always unlocked. You don't need a K branded one just to unlock your GPU so you can overclock them. So if you got a GPU, you're good to go. You need to understand first about GPU TDP and power draw. Well, whatever is your stated GPU TDP, that is essentially the heat produced. That is not technically the power drawn from your source, uh, that's your power supply and from the wall. So it's going to be a little higher than the rated TDP, the actual draw. So that brings us to the power headroom. Now what is power headroom? Now you have a particular leeway on your PSU from what the wattage you're actually using. So if you have an 850 watt power supply and you're using it to your its max potential, maybe running a Titan XP of it, well, you have very less power headroom. But whereas you have an 850 watt power supply and you're running a 1070, you have a very nice and juicy headroom to play with. Why that is important? Because that power draw, the TDP we were talking about, that increases exponentially when we are overclocking anything, be it CPU or GPU. So that headroom matters a lot. So you need to make sure your PSU can handle that. It can handle the overclock and the higher rated power draw. That is what is the key over here. Essentially, we can't let go of the airflow. That's critical even when you're not overclocking it, but when you are actually overclocking it, that matters more. Make sure your system has a good airflow through and through. Try to, you cannot have a total neutral pressure, but try to have good positive pressure in the case. What is positive pressure? That's another topic for another video. We are not dealing it here. So when you, when you keep that pressure handled, what essentially happens is cool air comes in, takes your hot air chunk out and goes throughout. Now, this keeps your temperatures lower because temperatures are going to get much higher when you're overclocking them. We'll talk about power limits and we'll talk about temperature limits and linking them a little later, but you need to know that your max temperature should be ideally should not exceed 83. That's the factory limit and generally you shouldn't be because it gets very toasty in there. You don't want to be in 83 degrees Celsius, right? That's that's the bummer. But if you have an airy case, you can overclock and still attain 70 degrees. Yep, that's possible. Just air cooling, nothing watery or liquidy inside. But then again, the stock cooler potential has its own limitations. You can't cool everything very so nicely with stock cooler, but removing that cooler and having a custom cooler, that's a very advanced topic, right? So there are cards which are reference cards or founder edition cards. They have the reference edition coolers on them and they're good enough. They are actually good enough. You know, there's, there's a thing, there's a myth that Founders Edition or Reference Card can't be overclocked very nicely. It doesn't have a overclock potential. But it's not true. You can actually overclock them very nicely. Even given that aftermarket cards are actually a little beefier with their heatsink, they're a little beefier, they cool out the GPU more, but they generally are not a blower style card, right? So they leave all those hot air to other components like your PSH unit or your CPU. They tend to get much hotter and that time airflow becomes more stricter. So if you have a reference card, founder's edition card that is, you're good. There's no problem in that. 
that actually is better for your system if you have a very compact system that actually helps a ton so even if you have an open air cooler and some gpus come with liquid cooling well then you're great right Ugh. there's water in there to cool your i don't know i didn't get a hot joke whatever starting off the bats we need a couple of softwares msi afterburner to be precise is a de facto standard for overclocking and you're just on screen displays with your frame rates and all nerdy stats you need it if you don't have it get it now then to test your overclock you need a benchmarking utility yeah granted you can use your games to do that but games take a longer time to load and blah 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 get heaven to benchmark that should solve your purpose there's another thing called Furmark. that's a great benchmarking tool and that really stresses your gpu that that fucks up your gpu like hot kunyara but don't use it unless you know what you're doing please don't use Furmark. it's going to burn your house down and get your latest drivers and we can begin finally so now that we have everything installed let's fire off afterburner we can start from here but my one's already running right so the thing to notice about afterburner is profiles make sure first before you do anything you save your current profile that's the default preset nothing fancy just so we're saving it so if we run into the range we got ourselves covered right so what we do is simply whatever stock everything you have don't touch anything go for save select one and profile one saved that's it simple as that so now this with this profile section we can load up individual profiles so one with an overclock one with a slightly more overclock one without okay second thing make sure your apply overclocking at system startup is unchecked for now that'll help because if you do something you mess up and you don't have to you know get into safe mode and all that cranky stuff okay well now that's out of the picture let's talk fans fancy fancy so we need to set up a custom fan curve i've got already a custom fan curve set up over here so we have already a custom fan curve running so we, how do we do that so we go into settings we go to fan and we create a particular profile now this depends a lot on your acoustic tolerance how much noise you can tolerate whether you're using headphones or you don't care about the noise or already you have some you're in a noisy environment and you have a lot of noisy stuff that your fan barely makes a tinge if that's the case you need to customize this a little to your preference but what i have set here you can copy that you can freeze the video now and you can copy this and that'll effectively help you what this does is when you're at say your temperature is at 30 degrees it's going to pump up the fan speed at 40 regular than the stock this is the yellow line this is the baseline on which is actually given so instead of being at a lower 30s somewhere right 28 29 it's going to be clocked up at 40 at 30 degrees so it's going to ramp up while you go for say 45 around it's going to ramp up the fan speed to 60 seriously it goes then 50 it goes to crank it up to 80 yeah, a lot of noise i know but it helps it does help and i use headphones so meh, i don't care and once you hit 60 degrees of that sweet bejeeming heat you go up to 100 that's how i like to keep it you can customize and tune it what you can do is you can drag these and set your custom fan curve okay but this is a good way to start and once you do that you can use enable user defined software automatic fan control keep that checked all right so once there we'll have user defined settings on or off make sure it's set on say so if i disable that it comes at 28 right that's pretty low okay but given that it's okay i could customize this a little lower but i like to keep a little more cooler so what i do is i keep this on so it's given the temperature it goes to that 58 which is nice for me so first step is the power the juice which goes into your graphics card we need to increase that to allow us for an overclock right it needs more juice to run that's why it gets hot as silly so simple thing to do is don't worry about anything just crank this up 
to max 112 where it goes that's it don't worry about a thing but see here when this temp limit is actually linked it goes to 92 degrees as their threshold limit after which thermal throttling is going to take place means it's going to reduce your frame rates it's going to reduce your actual performance of your gpu to conserve itself going further in its temperature limit but 92 is a bit toasty for my taste and you generally don't need to remember we are talking about conservative overclocks we are not talking about something very dangerous right something which will you know you can keep your graphics card for a long time yet get the more juice out of the butter i don't know that phrase came out correct nonetheless so what you do is once you put the power limit max to 112 you check out the link okay don't, don't keep this linked what you do is you keep it at 83 where it was and this is unlinked so now we have the power limit set at 112 and temp limit at 83 which was there whatever the base it was there initially keep it there done now the fancy bit is we need to increment this the core clock and the memory clock with small increments and run our benchmark right so right off the bat i can tell you most of the gpus won't mind if putting us successfully say around given 150 100 115 these are good ones you can start off the bat with them okay memory clock generally goes a little much more higher than this so i'll suggest you start with 200 off the bat so 100 and 200 off the bat and going forward increase it by 10 or 20 megahertz after you run each of these benchmarks so we have to check for stability over there so after we have applied your settings what we do is we fire up the benchmark now i've put 230 and 500 because i've tested them out for my gdx 1070 but you need to reach that threshold and again this is a very conservative overclock this can go much further but let's let's keep it simple today guys let's not burn down the house or our card you can get an rma though not to worry much okay so we fire of heaven benchmark now right off the bat i'm going to start with say at a 1440p res now if you have a lower clock card if you have say 760 1050 ti you need to customize these settings accordingly what you need essentially need to do is make sure it's dx11 if it's a modern gen card that's better off quality i'll say keep it ultra or stick to high if it's a really low end telsation keep it normal moderate or you can choose extreme if you have a higher end 1070 80 or i don't know a titan xp burning down your house you know the amount of time i said burning down the house if you drank you would be drunk already nonetheless so stereo 3d we keep it off we don't need it much multi-monitor yeah anti-aliasing again you can keep it at a lower setting if you have a lower end card okay stick with 1080p if you have even if you have a 1060 and anything below that stick to 1080p i'm gonna go with 1440p so let's run this maybe so while during the benchmark the initial phases is going to be absolutely fine and dandy not a problem but when you go into the higher clocks and you keep pushing it further and further there's a one limit you're going to reach that threshold so how do you know where that threshold is what you need to do is you need to check for artifacts color leaks random color pixels which shouldn't be there some color blotches on the screen light streaks you know the skin getting cut off stuff like that tearing you you will notice it when you do i'll put up some examples too so that's when you need to stop for that so we're going to let heaven do its course and calculate all our numbers for us so let the benchmark run through and through and once we have the data we can check how much our simple overclock actually helped us get more frames and it does get you a lot of frames at 2k if you get 10 frames increase with this very simple overclock which will guaranteedly not fuck up your system that's a lot of frames to be happy about cheer up so once your benchmarking is complete you need to do the same thing with the small increments again and run the benchmark and check for stability and those artifacts once that through and through once you've hit the threshold if anything goes wrong just restart your system remember you didn't apply the settings at, at reboot so every time you boot up you need to apply the profile once more so keep saving those profile that's pretty important right so you've done with everything and all the 
things checks out fine everything's running smoothly right so what's the next thing next thing is to know your system stability and how do you do that with a stress test and the thing is you don't have to do anything special for it you need to run that benchmark for an extended period of time 30 minutes to be precise 60 minutes to be on the safer side but beyond than that is just an overskill right so once you get that stress ready and your system doesn't crash there is no blue screen of death or any other stuff it runs fine just run the heaven benchmark for 30 60 minutes and you'll be fine once that's done you need to put your settings and apply overclock at system startup you need to check the tick box apply your settings and be done with that's it you've overclocked your gpu congratulations now let's look at the results with my 1070 founders edition so we were running the heaven benchmark at ultra extreme tessellation and max aa so with stock averaging at 51 and with oc we averaged at 59 that's eight frames increase that's a lot of frames i was hitting 51 right now i can hit almost 60 fps at 2k at max settings that's lovely right and if you see the max it's from 107 it all the way jumps up to 120 and again this is a very simple overclock there's nothing fancy we are doing it's very simple anyone can do this right so wow right so overclock does help a lot okay so we can see with 1070 over here now let's talk about other things which we can do to go further beyond this 120 there are a lot of things we can increase the core voltage we can change that power limit threshold we had at 112 we can go beyond that but those things have a potential of breaking your card and it can break your card trust me it can break your entire system though that's probably a little less and in burning down your house well that's also probability is a little less but it can break your card best thing is if you don't want to go all nuts and bolts in it this is a safe bet right so and what if you messed up what if you had that applied overclock you know for system startup you've checked that setting right now what happens is whenever you boot it's not going to start it's going to fail every time because it's going to apply that overclock which doesn't work no fret simply if you have another card something which is not of the same make and model i mean something which is not of that model so if you have a 1070 you can't have another 1070 card if you have a 1060 just plug it take your 1070 out plug your 1060 in and once you load up your system your MSI afterburner won't apply the profiles. Those profiles are based on your GPU. So if it's a different GPU, it won't matter, right? That's one way to reset it. Or many a times, obviously, you won't have an extra card lying around. Okay, so how do you do that? Just go into safe mode, boot into safe mode and uninstall afterburner, delete all your profile. End of story. And once you get into a normal mode and install afterburner, you're good as new. With no overclock, you can start from scratch. With all these overclocks, you have to be a little realistic. You can't expect your 760 will overnight turn into a 970 or your 1050 Ti will turn into a 1080. That's not gonna happen, right? Even a 1070 won't turn into a 1080 with an overclock, no matter what you do to it, unless you burn down the house. So have your expectations proper. Don't expect it to, you know, like I said, 760 to a Titan XP. Ugh. For AMD side of things, for the red team, you have AMD Catalyst Control Center. It's pretty much the same options like I showcased with Afterburner. It's the same thing. You have the power limit, you set your you know, core clocks, your memory clocks, and you go forth, right? Do let me know if you want a Catalyst Control Center overclock video. So I hope that was informative to you all, and I hope you can get your shiny new card and get more juice out of that. And that's more bang for your buck. So if that actually helped you, please do give us a like and share this video. I'm sure many have new graphics card they haven't overclocked yet or they're too afraid to do so. That would help them and that will help me too. So give this video a thumbs up or you can give it a thumbs down if it actually didn't help you. And if you want to break my heart, you can do that too. And whatever you think, what's your thought, write it below so I can read it. Thanks here. Yeah. Bye.